talking with police how's that conversation been today um, we've been talking with police police has definitely been way nicer a couple of them we've had a few of them such as officer Meredith specifically he came and talked to me first then and I really loved that he did that because it showed that he cared and respected and whenever we had that talk and he felt our sympathy and I could tell that he really cares about us and he deserves his badge and like, that's all we ask for like how can we come to common grounds if it's constantly attention like it's a threat between us and them. Like All we, we want still is peace. peace, and we want like man, just give us justice. Like give okay, us justice they for did our that people. for George Floyd, got the cops out of here for him charged. No, it's thousands of more. 2015 alone, 104 African American male with unarmed male was murdered by police last year alone. Over a thousand. We're hurt and we're not taking it no more. And that's another part of the reason why we went to Minneapolis. You know, I mean, you gotta stand up somewhere. You know, they say burning all of the buildings down is like, why are you breaking down your black businesses? Uh, I mean, it comes a time where you get fed up, you know, and you just gotta, you gotta do something, you know? And I think that's what it was. America let their anger out. Uh, George Floyd was the last man. Really, I came out here alone, and as I've been out here, I've met a couple other people. We just kind of decided that we were gonna start staying out here all night long so that we can get our point across because we felt as if that's the only way we would be heard if they saw that we were serious and continuing. So we continued to do it, and just as we did that, it brought a bigger crowd, and I'm just, here to make a change. I just wanted my voice to be heard and my voice was heard. Monday night when we first started with the protesters, it was very peaceful. Everybody was calm and we talked and we heard each other's different opinions. We had all different races there and it was very beautiful that everybody came together and they spoke. Now from the police officers, it was a little rough from them. We had three police officers on every single street. We had SWAT team around the corner. We had lasers pointed at us. We had to have our hands up walk in. And we had it a little rough. They kept driving by. You saw they flipped us off and would just kind of mess with us continuously. And we had to pull out our videos a couple of times. And it was heartbreaking that they did that. And we had one officer that night, only one who stopped and offered us water. And whenever he did stop, he seemed like he was a little scared to stop to offer us that water. And it kind of broke our hearts because you're, you're here to protect and serve us. So why are you scared to offer us some water for protesting for our lives and it shouldn't be like that and it might not be his fault that he was scared to do that because it might be how everything is but it's sad that it's like that and he shouldn't have felt scared to give us the water it was conversation but he didn't say nothing we didn't get any answers he said he, what he told us was it's too many how am i going to answer all of these questions if y'all saying them at once and then we tried to ask them one at a time i'm like okay everybody calm down ask him one by one, you know. We still didn't get any answers from that. He got mad and went over here and stood over here in the middle and left us. Like, like give us answers. Well, we was trying to talk to you. We, we hear a lot of things that he says that he's going to change, but we hope it's just not being said. We hope that there are actually going to be actions. We hope that that stuff is put into place, and we hope that stuff is done. We understand that the mayor cannot do everything alone since he is only a mayor, but since he does have that position, we need him to do everything he can and use all that power to get our word across, because it starts with him. I mean, the chief coming out here to talk, talk to, to us. So we can I mean, YouTube, and YouTube, YouTube is one thing. Let me tell you this, YouTube is one thing because I want to talk to him myself. I want everybody, everybody wants to talk to him face to face. I don't want to hear your officer saying, oh, he's a good man, he's this. I want to meet him myself. I, I mean, I don't know that. Maybe I have a different opinion than that than y'all got. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not, we just, <laughs> we just want him to come out here, that's it. I mean, 
it's not hard to. There's only it's so many times we can put band-aids over scars. Let's keep getting open. The same scars keep constantly getting pushed open, pushed open every time. Like it's, it's time for a change. I definitely request, requested for Governor Stitt to come out and talk to us today. And as you see, he never came out and talked to us. And we all I want I want to know why. Like why are we being treated this way for peacefully protesting? When yet you had another protest a couple of weeks ago with a different skin color, white males specifically, who walked with AR-15s across their bodies. None of them got tear gas. They didn't have the SWAT team waited for them. But whenever we march for our lives as black people, it's we're no longer fighting for freedom out here, but we are fighting for our lives. And whenever we march for that, we had SWAT teams on the corners. We had police. It was like they they were ready for they was ready for something bad to happen. And it's heartbreaking and devastating that we live in a world like that. Eventually, later that night, we had ended up getting tear gas. The people who walked to the Capitol never got tear gas, and they had AR-15s. They said we had rocks and bottles. Which one sounds worse, the AR-15 or a rock and bottle? AR-15s shoot up schools. Rocks and bottles, you'll get a cut. That's sad, not knowing if I'm having kids that's gonna make it back home to me. If I send them off to school, I let them go have fun at a party with their friend. All because a cop wanna sit here and be like, oh, you fit the description. And we so scared that they try to run and they just pull his gun out and they want to empty the whole clip. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, come on now. I understand y'all talking about shoot the kill, shoot the kill for what? What do you hope the media learns? What can the media learn from covering these events? What are the questions to ask? I hope that the I hope that the media learns from this that not everybody is bad, not every black person is bad, not every Mexican or any other color is bad. There's some of us out here who is really good, and I want them to see that there are good people and I want everyone to also see not everybody, not every police officer is a bad police officer. We do have good police officers here, but it takes our good police officers to stand up and remove the bad officers so that we can get all good officers so that we don't have to worry about our lives any longer. How can we end the people versus the police? And when I say the people, I mean the black community, the African American male community. How can we get it to where we can coexist in society without harming and killing each other? That's All we want is the, the chief to come out here and speak with us peacefully, you know? Because we bring in peace. Like, how can other chiefs go out and talk to their people around the world, but you can't come talk to us, you know what I'm saying? Like, we got to change. Hey, if he, if he does that, I respect the whole Oklahoma City Police Department. And, we can end and I life. never thought I'd say that, but hey, I respect all of them. I already told the guys out here that I respect them because they've been coming up to us, uh, talking to us, communicating with us, you know. And that's what it's about. That's all we ask is for answers. We ask them questions and we got answers. And that's all.